I want to go now to Christo Grozev. He is the investigative journalist uh, you all know, and he played a critical role in this prisoner exchange. Right now, Christo is in Germany. He is awaiting 12 other prisoners that Putin has released because, Christo, when we lay out these numbers, uh, there are there are four, obviously, coming to the United States, uh, Evan Gerskovich, Paul Whelan, Vladimir Karamurza. We know that they are, they are uh, on their way, perhaps, uh, some of them for sure. But you are waiting for the rest, many of whom you don't even know, no one knows where they're going to go, right? I mean, they're Russian citizens being released, dissidents being released. That is correct. I mean, um, eight Russian citizens have been released today. They will be um, coming here shortly. They've already landed in, in Germany. To them, this was a shock. Um, and they did not know that they were being prepared for this amazing trade from their point of view. Uh, they only found out in the last uh, 48 hours, 24 hours, many of them. So there's, they're going to be stranded in Germany. And uh, we're here to try to support them with at least trying to figure out the first days and where they're going next. I mean, pretty incredible, right, that, how that is and that they at this moment, in a sense, are stateless, uh, at least for those Americans, a place to come home uh, for the Russians. Um, uh, another and, another part of their is, story. Uh, yeah. Let's not forget that not all of them wanted to leave Russia. I mean, some of them explicitly had said that they would prefer to stay and fight within Russia, within jail. Uh, but but even they were part of this trade. So it's a complicated um, psychological state that they will be in. But overall, this on balance is 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 a good thing because many of these people were uh, languishing in jail and some of them were in poor health and. Uh, yeah. And getting them out here, um, giving them a fresh start is definitely the humane thing to do. And, and Christo, as you are in Germany waiting for this here at, at what is now the beginning of the next step, but the end of this actual transaction on this historic day, you were there when it began. You were in a restaurant with the chief U.S. hostage negotiator, Roger Carstens. This is back in April of 2023. At that point, Evan Gerskovich had been arrested by Putin just days before. So you're sitting there and you write down the names of people Putin would exchange uh, uh, for on a cocktail napkin, on a cocktail napkin. And that's how all of this began. And yet it wasn't until just hours ago, these past couple days, that you felt this was really going to happen. That is that is true. It was a multi-year project. It actually started even before that napkin. It started uh, at an Aspen security conference dinner where um, I shared my idea, our idea, of this potential humanitarian swap uh, with Hillary Clinton. She immediately latched onto the idea. She helped actually bring the the, the, the idea to the White House. Um, and then a year later, um, with with this meeting that I was um, privileged to have with Roger Carstens, I was able to explain to him the importance for the Kremlin of this particular criminal who uh, who was serving a life sentence in Germany. So let me ask um, you about that. The, let me just jump in, because that was the top name on the cocktail napkin, right? You write down Vadim Krasikov, this Russian assassin that you're talking about, serving a life sentence for murder, carried out other assassinations. We saw him tonight, uh, Christo, getting off the plane in Moscow. Uh, there he is, greeting Vladimir, getting a hug. Now, why was this one, this one man here, we're watching this, this meeting between him and Putin, so important to Putin? It was his personal assassin. That's uh, the nutshell uh, version of the story. We had identified at least three prior assassinations that this person had conducted within Russia, and all of the assassinations had a political motive. It was clearly something he'd done on behalf of the Kremlin. And um, we have evidence, to, reason to believe that this relationship with, with Putin goes back to long before uh, even he became president. So you could hear over the years Putin speaking about this unnamed uh, patriot in, in Germany who, who made a historic uh, patriotic uh, uh, act of duty. Um, but by Putin was talking about him in, in these glowing terms. He mentioned him yeah. or referred to him in his interview with Tucker Carlson. It was clear that there was a personal relationship there. And this explains why it was important. But another systematic reason why Putin was intent on getting this person back was because it um, it is the way to perpetuate the system of sending criminals and assassins abroad without them fearing that they will end up uh, living the rest of their lives in jails. Putin needs to show that he brings these assassins hmm. back in order for him to be able to send new assassins in the future. I, I know there had been a, a hope and, and perhaps almost it happened. And, and then Alexei Navalny died. That, that that transaction could have happened. Alexei Navalny, your dear friend, uh, could have could have come out and that that would have been the way this story went. It did not. And I know that is a bittersweet moment for you, even as you have joy for those who are released, uh, that, that this did not happen. 
and Alexei Navalny died in Russian prison. But how did that affect this deal? It almost torpedoed the deal because the original concept was to create this uh, multi national multi-state uh, transaction which would include the person that uh, Putin really wants back delivered by Germany to Russia but Germany wanted to do this transaction or this deal only they could get Putin's biggest enemy out of um, incarceration and and, and alive um, and with Navalny dying um, in jail of course this made the german attitude to this whole deal much much less uh, interested and it was it was very difficult for this to be revived revived germany took the higher moral ground here and said we will continue pursuing mm. this deal however now putin must pay a much higher price and instead of one person for this killer we're going to ask for eight people and they got it and in a way navalny led to essentially more freedom more people being free today through his death, which yeah. is something that I wish, um, I, I think he would have loved to know that happened as a legacy mm -hmm. for his um, self-sacrifice. Truly bittersweet. Uh, you know, I want to just ask you about the, the, the U.S. prisoners, because we've seen uh, all of them except for one, Vladimir Karamur is a green card holder. Uh, his, his wife and family are here in the U.S. Just one month before he was arrested, Christo, uh, Putin had invaded Ukraine. And, and Vladimir and I were talking, he was on the show, and I want to just play for you one thing he said and, and to hear him and also see how he looked. There are absolutely no limits to what Vladimir Putin can do. I think the world is seeing this loud and clear now as, you know, as, as we're witnessing this large scale land war, this large scale war crime happening right at the heart of Europe. Christo, that was 28 months ago. And as I said, it was just after that that he was traveled, he was arrested. And that's the last time uh, that, that his family's seen him, that, that we've seen him. Uh, we know his health is not good. We know he had been poisoned twice, even prior to that conversation. Do you have any idea how he is doing tonight? Uh, we are hopeful that he's doing fine. We know that some of the people on, uh, on the plane uh, coming out of uh, Turkey today um, had health uh, issues. We hope that, um, that he's not one of them. Um, and I, I just uh, am looking forward to seeing him and embracing him. And he's, he's a hero. I really hope that he's in a great um, uh, physical shape. He's very strong. He survived two assassination attempts and he continued fighting and going back to Russia. I think somebody like that definitely will, uh, will, will, will withstand any physical challenges. Christo, thank you very much for uh, joining us, of course, from these early hours now of Friday morning in Germany.